uh, when I was healing from my uh, operation, I realized that my body was traumatized by the whole event. Uh, just because I'd been put under to do the operation didn't mean right. that the body wasn't actually uh, aware and conscious. And of course it was. And a week or so after the operation, I was dealing with the trauma, really, because uh, I couldn't sleep. Every time I, I drifted off to sleep, my body wouldn't allow it. It just mm. wouldn't go. It, wouldn't, it just didn't trust anything. <laughs> and uh, mm. the only thing that actually uh, helped me, this was after a whole night of, of intense catharsis, was uh, the Gayatri Mantra in the end. And it was a bit stupid of me, really, because, you know, I had that tool there. I've had it for years, but it, it took me a few hours before I actually realized that uh, I had I had my own medicine. Mm. I had it there, and uh, hmm. after so many hours of... of so that was also good, the crying with us, I'm sure. Oh, it was, all, was, it was all necessary, but, yeah. uh, you know, what, what I didn't have at that point was the slowing down that we've been talking about and the breath. And uh, the Gayatri just uh, settled in the room like rose petals, like these little parts that are coming through the screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it just settled down into uh, a place where Dave and I could lay together and breathe. And, uh, and eventually we just drifted off to sleep with the sound of the Gayatri Mantra. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, yeah, that's, that's a definitely a big moment for me. And I didn't need to know anything about what the Gayatri meant or I didn't need to intellectualize anything. I was way beyond that. It was... Yeah. Uh, it was obvious. It was a moment in time. Which, uh, mm. so, yeah. For me, the most unforgettable experiences um, are when we receive letters where people say they actually um, were close to taking their own lives, and um, and mantra came into their lives, and and something, and that sparked a little flame again. That was exactly. that that was made them feel like it's worth to keep going mm. and uh, I have a, now she's become a really dear friend of ours and she wrote to us many years ago and she she was literally totally at the end of of uh, of the of the rope. rope and some friend of her said like look I just I, I gift you a massage you know just go to this have a massage and the massage therapist put on the Gayatri Mantra and um, our friend, she had never heard of mantras. She didn't know she was uh -huh. brought up Christian and had no, had no contact with mantras, didn't know what mantras were, totally didn't know what the Gayatri Mantra meant or, or how powerful it is. And just listening to it in that massage, something totally shifted and uh, and she she found the, the, the will to live and and actually, then the words just came so easily to her. She could just learn them really quickly, although she had never heard mm. something before. Or she actually ended up learning the Hanuman Chalisa, like just in one flash, like this. Just uh, um, another example that we have this connection to the Sanskrit language that's deeper than the mm. mind, and that's really a cellular. Uh, it, it addresses our cells. You know, it's uh, it's very direct energy language. Yeah, I, those are all beautiful stories. It's interesting how when people share their beautiful stories, you know, we talk, we use that, the phrase heartwarming or, you know, heart centered. And, you know, you see all the hearts on the screen of the people who are responding, uh, who are listening. Um, there's something about the human heart that's really quite extraordinary. And, and most of us have dealt with heartache. Uh, I mean, you obviously had more than an ache. You know, you, you know somebody was digging in your chest um, to touch it, which was a miracle in itself, if you're thinking about it, uh, and has given you a chance for many more days where, you know, 20, 50 years ago, that maybe wouldn't be the case. We still have to ask the question, why are we alive? And why do we actually go through any of these things? And that nothing is going to solve all those problems. But there's something beautiful when we have a challenge and we find something soothing that reinforces the fact that we are alive and that there's some beauty, some deeper beauty 
that will touch us even when we're in pain. And that's the hope, that's the faith, that's the love. And I think one day, this, the mystery for all of us, uh, not necessarily in this body or, or, or with this limited intelligence that we possess in this body, we will become more aware of the full, complete picture. The, the issue for us now is just to get through with it as much beauty as possible and to use the tools we have access to and the support of other people, including their stories, uh, to make the days more beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when people lose that, lose, lose the tether to that, that's when they become, you know, use the phrase hopeless. Um, and that's when, you know, some people, you know, don't really see an alternative um, which is a real deep sadness that we are experiencing collectively now more than ever because we're aware of the pain people are experiencing and the uh, difficulty they're having accessing this. But this is what we can do to help each other. We could just share these stories and we could share the message and sh you share your music in a way that penetrates beneath the walls of our um, cynicism, skepticism, yeah. uh, and goes into something that is much more enduring. Yeah, that's true. You can't sing mantras in a cynical way. You can't mm. sing mantras in an emotional way either. It's, uh, David's mm. voice is not an emotional voice. It's not mm -hmm. something that's trying to convince anybody or share a, some emotional feeling. It's beyond that. Right. That's yes. where the thing. And you can't sing mantras with a closed heart, you know, like you can sing. Mm -hmm. With a with a sadness or with a, but there there has to be something that is that is open. You can't you know when you're angry, for example, you know usually our hearts are closed when we're angry, like mm -hmm. thing, you know. And uh, yeah, it's it's very, it's a really good mirror, you know, when yeah. you sing and, and how and then also how your voice sounds. That's one of the benefits of of duality. I mean, even though many. Eastern traditions talk about duality as an issue, as a problem. It's in the duality and the contrast that we learn where the edges are. We learn what the alternative is. Um, and for whatever reason, we need to be in this body with the ability to feel hot and cold and to be angry and sad. Uh, and it teaches us something. There's a purpose to it. And therefore, embracing even the challenges by figuring out what does it take to get out of that hole. Um, is has some inherent value. Mm. Uh, I, I would love for all the suffering in the world to dissipate, but I do believe in some way that with high levels of conscious application, consciousness, um, there's something particularly powerful about overcoming those challenges. That um, if we were just gifted with everything perfect, we would not have the ability to achieve. Mm -hmm. So we keep singing. <laughs> and, and keep creating music and beauty and bringing people from darkness to light. Mm -hmm.